Okay, Mr. Lucas, Robert Lucas, Mr. Previn, and Mr. Sachs. You no know presentation, Kirk? No presentation. Okay, uh, yes, it's Eric Previn, uh, a county resident from District 3 and a bit of a student of the county golf operations. Uh, this is a uh, measure to raise rates for county golf courses. Uh, I, I would ask the Board of Supervisors to hold off on approving this until we can resolve a few uh, pending issues. One specifically has to do with a California Public Record Act request for uh, numbers relating to something called the Players Club Supervisor Q, which is an interesting program uh, that lowers, uh, it's a nice entry level for golfers, uh, and it has not yet been established what our relationship with the providers will be. It's American Golf who's running this program. And the reason why it's of interest is, is that the overall county golf portfolio, uh, a year ago, there was a shift. Some of the trusted uh, providers like Paul Major at American Golf uh, stepped out, and others stepped in uh, in the form of uh, a Wall Street group uh, related to Fortress. It's not actually Fortress, which is uh, the subject of a very uh, important inquiry that's ongoing. Uh, it's a group called Newcastle, run by a guy named Wes Edens, who is a... Um, Wall Street player. And the reason why we're interested in the Players Club numbers are because his business plan is to migrate revenue uh, away from county uh, rent toward uh, less supervised revenue that will then be, of course, uh, used to show growth on his portfolio of public and private courses nationally, frankly. And then, of course, what he's going to do is what he does, which is spin these things off for an enormous profit. There's one date in the recent past where with a new senior program, he, he yielded himself $500 million in one day. So that's a, a big concern about Wall Street on Main Street because county golf, as we all know, uh, is uh, intended to be uh, a little bit below market rates because, in fact, uh, country club golf is widely available. And another point about revenue here, they're going to give you a sob story about how we can't make things work. The truth is that in Supervisor Solis's district, there's been a pernicious lawsuit that is now not quite settled, but about to be settled. So we'd like to know what the terms of that settlement are, in addition to the Public Record Act requests that have been previously made. And we'd like to know what the county uh, big picture plan is, because at item 2P today, Supervisor Kanabi is unloading about a million bucks into five courses, mostly fourth district excess funds, so it's his right to do that. But we want to understand, knowing that we're going into a period where Parks and Rec overall, Supervisor Solis, as you recall, is experiencing uh, a shift with the $96 and such. So we want to be sure that rather than offloading all those things uh, until we have clarity about what's happening on these golf courses. And I will tell you, uh, the Players Club uh, is sneaky. It is a way of putting golf uh, revenue into a cash register that is not taxed the way the county likes to tax revenue. And uh, I asked the board to take a look at this. I'll explain it in more detail over the next week. You can bring it back in a week, and there's nothing wrong with a week. I mean, transparency is, of course, uh, what makes the world go around. And I just think it's better that everybody understand uh, the nature of this uh, deal. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lucas. 